Hey, what's up, world? This show is sponsored by Fly Level. Um, this is Cat Harvey, the host and producer of the Cat Harvey Show. I'm so excited to have this young gentleman who's nice and clean beside me. Uh, <laughs> he's ready to talk about one of his businesses, Manpower DC. He's a super servant in the community. I mean, this guy is one of those people that not only talks about a great game and what he's going to do for people, but he also does it. And I mean, so many people have great and positive things to say about him. Like I said, he's changing the culture, changing the world. He's definitely the definition of black excellence. And I'm so excited to have Mr. Jimmy. Mr. Jimmy Black, right? That's what they call yes, you. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm blessed, man. I'm awesome. Blessed. You're nice. He, my viewers like, why he got on the suit? Yeah. <laughs> but he's clean, you know. He had to step it up, you know, whatnot. So can you tell people a little bit about yourself and what you have going on? Uh, yeah, my name is Jimmy Jenkins. Uh, I'm from Southeast Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, I have a company called Manpower DC. It's a growing company right now. Um, we do a lot of community engagement, uh, uh, resource, bringing resources to the community. We're in the schools twice a week. We're wow. over at DC jail once a week. Um, we do a lot of uh, safe initiatives for the Office of Councilman Matreon White. Um, I mean, we do it all, man. Okay, so going into the jail, what, what made you to, what made you want to get into that arena? Uh, just having conversations with big brothers like uh, Jahar, Abraham, and Wally uh, Johnson with J&J and &J just having conversations with them uh, back when they had Pizza Holics. Uh, that's something they used to do. And now that, you know, the, the city has changed, uh, a lot of the guys who are over there now are people who grew up with me, you know, and, um, and, I, and, I, and I felt like, you know, I owe that to, you know, the community and, and just how it's important to get over there and talk to the fathers over there because the program uh, named it Black Fathers Matter. So right. um, we over there speaking to the dads uh, and, and running sessions on um, how to be a dad. Okay, so for the men that's not dads, how do you teach them as far as fulfilling that role, especially when a lot of us don't come up with our dads and mm -hmm. whatnot. So what, what does your program do to make sure that, you know, we kind of can break the cycle one at one by a time? So for you talking about for men who are not dads, right. period, uh, just being a positive image, right? Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of times you don't have to be a dad to set example for a kid who is not a, that doesn't have a dad around, right? It's just being a positive image and showing them how a man should should, should uh, protect and provide in a society and, and just you know grow as a, a human being itself, you know. So you don't have to be a dad. It's That's just true. being that positive image, you know, being in front of that kid to show them what. A productive man looks like you know okay so I want to get to the nitty-gritty um, being an entre entrepreneur myself for almost 10 years um, people don't get to see the non glamorous side. I don't know if you do this full-time or whatnot but <laughs> I'm sure there's people in the beginning or probably people now I could bet you it's people now I could give a thousand dollars probably people now who still don't support your movement probably say you know what he may not know what he's doing mm -hmm. what do you do in those instances because I know people look up to you they see all this stuff but what do you have to say to them because they might not want to do you know what you do maybe they want to do mm -hmm. something else but they're looking to you but what can you see to them as far as for their mom dad or girlfriend or whatever that may not support them and how have you dealt with that piece uh, first and foremost, uh, I think you should always go to God first with anything you do, right? Yeah. And then the second thing is that anything in life that's worth having, you know, what I mean, you're gonna work. You have to work for yourself. So okay. don't always look for someone to do something for you. And uh, like you say, manpower hasn't received nothing from the government. You know, we've been. I've been doing this for four or five years now. Wow. And uh, it's just all in, you know, your heart. You know what I mean? And if you're doing it from the heart money, resources, and all that it shouldn't matter. You know, if you're going to do the work, do it from the heart and, and you know, put go to God with it and things work out. And, and then the sad thing about it is that people don't see those who help me. You know what I mean? I have a, 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 a huge amount of support, you know, starting with my family first, you know, my lady, my mom, my kids, you know, my church family, and, and even people in the community, right, that supports Manpower DC, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's that's just what it is. Okay. So what what did year one look like versus now? What is it, year four, year five? What what had to change? Well, so I and, and it's it's just like uh, <laughs> you know, with with, with uh you know the that uh, with Trayon getting in on the council. So manpower didn't have a title, right? Okay. It just was 
you know, the ideas and, you know, Foz and getting incorporated. We didn't do that until it's, it's, it's going to be a year that we have been incorporated, right? But the work has been going on for four to five years. You got to be ready for that. So right. that was smart because you don't want the IRS coming right. after you right. now. Right, right. <laughs> and and, and, yeah. and it's, it's, it's all in, and that's, that's the other story that people don't know, right? We got so many people who's doing the work. But they're not doing the other the other pieces. That's as far as you know, getting incorporated. You know, what I mean, getting tax. You know, mm-hmm. doing your taxes, all this stuff. So a lot of our people got to understand. You know, you know, it's it's okay to just do the work, but you got to do the paperwork. You know, you got to get incorporated. You know, what I mean, things of that magnitude. So, you know, it's 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 a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, do you think you can become mayor? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, well, well let, me, let me put this out there. Uh, probably about 2007, um, you know, in high school, uh, you know, I started calling myself the mayor. Um, the reason being because I had relationships all over the city. And and it, it wasn't on a political level. But as time has, has been going on and I've just been seeing how, you know, our people are being mistreated and... and, and um, you know, our city is growing um, economically, right? But our people are not being built up, but the city has been built up. It kind of forces you to to say, well, look, you need to put yourself in position and probably do something. But I'm not saying that I'm going to run. <laughs> okay. But I see, I can see myself being a mayor because, I, I mean, first and foremost, my heart for my, and my passion and my love for my city itself, you yeah. know, can put me in that position. But I got to also do my homework and, and, and focus on, you know, policy and things of that magnitude to, to say I'll run. But I can see myself running. OK, so what would be, you know, everybody has a top three, top five. What top three or top five priorities? You know, I don't know how old you are, but let's say, you know, say if you had to 30 or 32 to get something done, what would be the top three things Jimmy has to get done? And it doesn't have to be. For your business, but what are three things that kind of mean the most to you that you haven't done yet that you would kind of feel more, you know, fulfilled or you know whatnot? Uh, the first thing is um, of um, trying to go get a master's degree or something like that, and and just get more get get uh, I could I'll say uh, become a home homeowner as well, and and the last thing. It's just um, understanding uh, the government, understand how the government works and operate in policy. Uh, those are the three things right now that I'm kind of really focusing on because uh, just because of how the city is changing. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I feel like if, you know, if you're not on top of the game in, in the education field, um, owning, owning something in the, gov- I mean, in the city and just knowing the government itself, um, I think you, you'll you lose out on a lot of opportunity and you may lose out being in the city as well. Yeah, I mean, they're raising property tax and everything else. Now, I don't know if you know, but before you got your LLC, and I was just talking to like, one of my girlfriends who just got hers recently in D.C., that before you didn't even have to have a basic business license, even if you were doing business online, which right. is now, you know, you're looking at people trying to scrape for change. And now it's like, oh, my God, now I got to pay for a basic business license. That's an additional three or $400 that I initially yeah. Wasn't expected to do so. You are definitely um, right about that. Let's talk about gun violence. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I've known people that pass away. I'm sure you have countless, countless people. I know everybody say, you know, one day it's going to stop. I- I'm a realist. You know, I- this world. You know, you've seen the Bible and talks about all this stuff that's happening today. That I think there's a way we can lessen it, but I really don't think it's going to ever go away. But mm-hmm. how do we get more of our people to? support each other and then of course stop the whole gun violence and stop doing petty stuff you yeah. know what i'm saying uh from the gun violence i think for me it's, it's just been i think it's been going on since i was a kid you know and and not only was i was blessed to be able to get out of the streets and and, and transform and and just you know uh, have a successful uh life right but I think for me, it's, it's on a higher level. You know, I think that's a federal issue. You know, guns are being brought into the city that we have no control of. And then, and then on the, the local issue, I think it's just more of, a, you know, opportunities being presented to that population. 
a lot of people say, well, you know, the government has uh, programs for people to do. And, and, and the problem is the programs are not, you know, set out for people to actually have a transformation in their life. It's just like a quick fix. Yeah, it right? is. So if, you, if you're putting in programs for someone to do something within six months, what are they going to do after those six That's months? True. They're going to go back to the norm. And, and, and the problem is that we're focusing on, what I see is that we're focused on a 20 and 24 population. But what about those young folks who's looking up to those guys that we're not touching? Right. That's true. So I think if, if we're going to stop gun violence and just violence and crime itself, we got to focus on programs that really touch the kid, the big brother, the mother, the father and the grandparents. Because we're looking at the city itself, we have households who fill with that population. You may have a kid, a big brother, a father, or a, grand, a mother or a grandmother who all may be suffering. You know, that's true. So we gotta find we gotta find programs that really touch the household, not just one individual in the household. So how do we create you know more opportunities for the youth? I mean. It's cool to have a little community center. That's real cute, but mm -hmm. I'm all about you know people need money. You need resources to right. do things. Let's 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 not be let's not make any mistake about that. So how can we create more opportunities for these young kids so they can become whatever they want to become doctor, lawyer, instead of just um, you know whatever they can can do or become or if they happen to run up somebody on the rec center, like how can we get that stigma out of it and get these young people to actually make some real money and stop working at McDonald's and DTLR and no no disrespect anybody out there. I know yeah. you gotta start somewhere, but that shouldn't be the norm. Like right. they should start like any other race up there with, you know, different internships or whatnot. I, I think the it starts with in the school, you know, on an elementary level. When you in elementary school, you know, they're always telling you to go to college, you yeah. know. But they don't ever tell you, you know, when you come out of college, you're going you're gonna to struggle, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't have something outside of that degree. That's true. You know what I mean? With me, I, I, I had a skill. I had a skill of uh, playing basketball, and I, I had a skill to paint. So while I was trying to find, you know, um, a, a job with, in my, with, with my degree, I, I was able to fall into those categories where I had a summer camp. I started my own summer camp. And I also cool. started my own paint company. So I was painting and I was doing a summer camp throughout the year, right? And doing little summer clinics and training kids, however you want to look at it. But a lot of times we try to push kids to get into college. But a lot of them come home and they, they have student loans. Yes. You know, they come home, they don't have no job to walk into, mm -hmm. right? And 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 so yeah. we gotta we gotta we gotta, you know, teach them not only about education, but also entrepreneurship, also about you know, really start working on, you know, second, second plan B, plan C, plan D, yeah. you know, because a lot of times our kids are just programmed to just focus on education. And when they fail in college or if they fail in high school, they have nothing to fall back on. That's true. You know what I mean? Because who's to say that every kid is going to go off to college, you know, and get financial aid or D.C. tag? What if they don't get that out of high school? Mm -hmm. They got to get into I.T. They got to try to get into all these other you know, fields, but we're not preaching that early on. That's true. You know, so I think that's where it starts. Okay. I always say, you know, bad people ruin it for the good ones. And I have mixed feelings about the whole welfare, WIC, and all this other stuff, mm -hmm. these different programs, because Medicaid, Medicare, one day all this stuff is going to be gone. Whether if you believe it or not, and we got this this thing in office. Um, I don't know what planet he came from, but, um, <laughs> you know, at what point can we keep people from abusing the system? Because I do believe there are some people that really need it. I don't mm -hmm. think it's the whole world because I've known people, I've had family members who got the wick, but they got on the jewel and they got on the Uggs, they got the whatever on, so they got their priorities in the wrong place. So how do we keep people from abusing the system so that it doesn't go away so soon? Because there's so many people right now that's abusing the system. Um. You know, grandparents, if you grew up in the hood, they tell you, you don't believe it till it stinks, right? And I think even we can look at Trump and we, we can look at Trump and what he's doing and people still don't catch on. But you got to also look at your agency commissioners. You got to look at your council members. You got to look at your mayor. You got to look at these people as well and hold them accountable just as much as you hold Trump accountable, right? And, and, and I think they all have faults and they all have uh, ways that, you know, that's not 
for the community, right? So it, it all boils down to what you're going to do personally. Are you going to hold yourself accountable, right? And I think a lot of times we don't want to deal with ourselves. So it's a lot easier for us to say, man, you know, Trump is doing this, yeah. you know, or, you know, the mayor is doing this or, the, you know, the council member is doing this. But what are you doing personally to put yourself in position so that won't happen to you? You know what I mean? And, and, and all this stuff has been systematic for, for many years, right? But I know for me, my family has been on welfare and stuff when we were coming up, right? But it took, you know, my mom and my aunts to say, well, I'm going to go get me a job. Mm -hmm. And even for those who didn't get jobs in my family, because I still have people who who own public assistance, right? Right. But I wasn't the one that said, well, look, I'm getting ready to follow that same path. Because deep down inside, you got to make a decision where as though you you know right from wrong. You just got to make a decision on what you want to do personally. Okay. So you have kids, plural. Mm -hmm. Okay. Son and daughter? Two sons. Two sons. So what do you want your sons to learn or take away from you? Well, I, me personally, I just feel like, you know, every parent should create a path that your kids, you know, want to, you know, walk through or surpass, right? Yeah. And, and I know my sons, you know, I have a relationship with them where as though they just look at me, look up to me and like, you know, like I'm, you know, this hero. But I just want them... To, to see, and they saw early on because I had my one of my sons early, so he was actually going to college with me. You know, he was coming down to oh school. Oh my gosh, wow. Going to some of my college games, walking in and out of the dorm. Like, so he experienced, you know, being on a college campus at one and two years old, you know what I mean? So, you know, I want them to know that it's, it's, it's bigger than just, you know, getting a degree in college. You know, it's bigger than just being a dad. It's bigger than just being a black man. You know, it's it's all about, you know, accepting Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and, and following his will and his way. And then everything else will fall into place. You know what I mean? Don't get caught up into society uh, expectations. That's true. You know what I mean? Get caught up into the word and find out what God has for you, and everything else will just fall in place. Okay. Well, it seems like you're a guy with a plan. So what does your rituals look like? I know people see you post on social media, but what, what do you do behind the scenes to get these things done? Because a lot of these young people, they wish in, they believe in these books, they listen to Diddy and, and, and Billy and all these different people. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but they really, and, and then, you know, they say, you know, this, this is my year, I'm on some new stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, they're yeah. still in the same place. So what do you do to ensure that every year you're progressing and what, you know, tips can you give to somebody else to actually write these things down mm-hmm. and make sure they're checking them off daily, weekly, monthly, or whatnot. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, the first thing, like I said, uh, you know, I always, I mean, I'm big on, on, on God. I pray a lot, right? And then I, I rarely sleep sometimes, you know what I mean? Because I feel like if I go to sleep without accomplishing or getting something down on paper, yeah. then it won't get done. You know, I'm big on that, you know what I mean? And then... And then, like you said, you got to stop putting your stuff down on paper so you can hold yourself accountable. Yeah. You can ask my lady, you can ask my mom, you can ask anybody. Mm-hmm. I got papers from <clears throat> from eight years ago. Right. You know what I mean? Stuff that I, I had written down or my notes from eight years ago that I put stuff down in my notes. You know, you got to start using the stuff you have. Like everybody got these iPhones, you know what I mean, and notes, but they don't never put nothing in their notes. That's true. You know what I mean? They don't go back. And, you know, and, and check, you know, because the, the, what you got to understand that there's always a blessing and a follow up. Right. So if I put down in 2010 and this is true, I put together a five year plan. I said in 2010 that I wanted to make, you know, five hundred thousand dollars. Right. It's 2018. I think in 2014, I, 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 I made that I made that benchmark. But, you know, I didn't make it the saving piece. You know what I mean? And I, and, <laughs> but, you know, I I still, you know, set a goal in a five-year plan. So I think a lot of times people want to do what we're doing today, but they don't really want to do that that the extra step, you know, the paperwork, you know what I mean, the, the, the sleepless nights, you know what I mean, the, the seven, eight meetings a day, you know what I mean, things of that magnitude. So that's a lot of times behind the scenes is rough, okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's real rough. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you keep the bad vibes and the people that don't like you? I'm sure that they're out there and you probably oh, know yeah. or don't know. How do you keep them out of your, your ear, out of your circles? A lot of people tend to, you know, 
focus on that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then kind of control yourself. And, like, you know, my, my boyfriend always says, you know, it's about chess, not checkers. Yeah. It's just like Jay-Z. Yeah. So how do you have that mindset when, you know, when that piece comes up, when you're trying to do the right thing and yeah. you see this person over here giving you grief? Mm -hmm. What do you do in those instances? Oh, uh, man, it's, <laughs> it's tough uh, because, I mean, for, for me, and, you know, my lady, she always get on me. I always feel like people don't like me. You know what I mean, and I. Why? I, I, it's, it's more of a, of me trying to stay humble and just stay focused thing. You know what I mean? Because I don't never want to get up to the point where as though I say everybody like me, and then you encounter somebody that don't like you right. or hate on you, right. and you blow up. So it's just a, a it's just a, a character thing with me. I just feel like nobody don't ever have to like me. You know mm. what I mean? They not, they not put on this world to like me. And I really don't care if they like me. Okay. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's more of a if you love yourself thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love myself enough to, to not have nobody to love me. As long as I know that God loves me and I love myself, I'm good. You know what I mean? So I don't really get caught up in that. You know what I mean? And that's why I think a lot of people, you know, respect me and, 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 and deal with me because, you know, I'm kind of straightforward, but I'm real. And, and I still show major love, you know, even for those people I know that may don't like me, Right, you right? have to. You I have still to. show them love and support them, you know what I mean, just because I be a hypocrite to the word itself. Yeah, and then one day they might actually like you. Oh, yeah. You know, that, yeah. that happens, you know, you blow up people. Oh, Jimmy, I yeah. knew you could yeah. do it. You know, you like, man, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That happens a <laughs> lot. Right, that right, happens a right. lot. That happens a right. lot. Right, so, you know, so who, you know, out of everybody who kind of mentored you, who would, I would say, who would be two people that kind of said some things to you that kind of changed your life? Mm. Um, the first person would be uh, my mom. Okay. Uh, my mom, man, she, my mom is a real soldier, man. You know, uh, not to, you know, ever discredit my dad for what he has done, but, you know, uh, early on as a kid, we moved with my mom, and uh, I just seen her go through so many stages, you know, as a, a black single woman, you know, being divorced and, you know what I mean, just, you know, struggling with bills, but sacrificing to get two and three jobs, you know, and uh, just, you know, getting off of drugs and, you know, getting into, you know, uh, Christ and just, my mom just been through so much, but no, no matter what, she has always made sure that we were straight. Right. She always prayed for me. You know, she always gave, gave me the real advice, you know what I mean? Because a lot of parents sugarcoat things to their kids and take right. their sides, you know what I mean? Even if it's with, with me and women, like, she'll let me know, like, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, no matter if that I'm her son or not. And then that always helped, just having a mom who never sugarcoats nothing with you and uh, who always was by your side. Even when I made her cry and made and hurt her, she still was right there. And, and, and that showed me you know, uh, consistency. And, and and that's how I always been because of my mom setting that example. Like she was consistent with her love for her kids. No matter what storm she went through, yeah. she made sure her kids were good. That's so that good. was good for me. And then the last thing was uh, my grandfather, man. Um, he passed. Um, my grandfather showed me that, you know, because I'm a money guy, I always was, I mean, when I was in the street, I always loved, I, th I thought just money was everything. But when I lost my granddad, uh, something that stuck with me was that it's, it's, it's never always about the money. You know, my granddad was just the glue. You know, he didn't he didn't really, you know, he wasn't this person that had a lot of money, but he had a lot of love and he had a lot of advice, and he just was there all the time. I mean, if he had to walk from Southeast to Georgia Avenue, and he had done that before, <laughs> wow. he would do that just to be there for us. You know what I mean? And I mean, he was everything. He was the driver. He was the <laughs> chef. You know, he was wow. everything. You know what I mean? And just just having him, you know, to, to be in our lives as we got older and just having him to see, you know, me make that transition, I think it did something good to his heart. Because when I was in the streets, man, he was concerned. And we always checked in and we kept it, he kept it where as though and when I try to keep it short with him, he still get his little <laughs> word out. That's and, how he do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it was good to 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 know that he, you know, he he, he I know he's excited, man, but I, I, I miss him and uh, you know, 
That's them two people, man. Well, I know he's excited for shouting him out today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, you got to show love, you yeah. know? Um, so at the end of the day, what's what's the vision for yourself and what upcoming projects or events do you have? Um, the vision for myself, uh, my vision for myself is to really, you know, change the culture. And what I mean by that is that a lot of times um, we miss certain populations with this work we're trying to do. Yeah. And, and how do we change the culture? We give the kids and bring the people that the kids like to, to, to vibe with in the community so they can deliver our message to them. Mm. Because a lot of times we're trying to deliver the message and we, ain't, we, we don't have that, that, that uh, connection. That's true. Right? Yeah. So a lot of times I try to get all the rappers and, and shout out to all those guys, man. You know, like Fat Trill, Mike D'Angelo, 3 0 Black, you know what I mean? Light Show. While they, you know what I mean, because those guys, you know, they show up and 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 and, and we're able to deliver our message through them. And, and a lot of kids are, are buying into it because that's what they like to see. I mean, our kids don't want to you know skate mobiles and stuff <laughs> like that, you know what I mean, yeah. and then try to deliver a message. That's we got to give them what they want so they can then buy into what we're saying. And then uh, some things I got coming up. Um... I'm going to try to do this uh, local IM D DMV Awards, something like a BET Awards. Okay. And it kind of honors some of these folks who really out here working hard. That's because I, I feel like a lot of our people from DMV, uh, this is the first time I think uh, Shaq Glizzy and Goldlink got nominated for a, gra a Grammy, but they didn't get it. But a lot of times, we don't they don't really get to get on the BET stage. That's true. But they out here working. They out here going hard. So we need to create our own platform. That's true. And uh, I think our city is big enough to do that, you know. And uh, and then I got my uh, one year anniversary coming up. Uh, we gonna have that in, uh, in uh, May. Um, and then uh, we have summer camp coming. So okay. That's our, my three things that we're focusing on. All right. Well, I'm glad you started to loosen up a little bit. I can yeah. I can tell the difference. You know, yeah. he let me in. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I thank you so much for the gems and jewels. I know this message has definitely blessed somebody. And I wanted to this interview to be different from the news because you know they don't dig deep. They give you what ten minutes or yeah. whatever. So can you tell the world where they can find and connect with you at? Yes. Uh, my social media at Jimmy Black Jr. J I M M I E. No Y. Black Junior on social media. And then you can also follow, I mean, you can check in with us with our work at manpowerdc.com. Okay. You guys check out Mr. Jimmy. He's changing the world and the nation. And I see nothing but great things for you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, guys.